Welcome, tech for o channel. I'm Michael, the M365 electric scooter by Xiaomi. And almost two years after it was released and about 12 months ever since I have it, uh, it's actually the electric scooter that showed us that these devices can be affordable and reliable at the same time. Um, it's been quite a lot happening, so I'd love to share my experience, like uh, about my flat tires, the issues with the folding mechanism, the fine tuning and add-ons I've purchased, and overall about the good and the bad. Let's get started! There are six topics I really want to talk about today. We're gonna to start with the tires and tell you about my experience so far. Uh, then we're gonna cover the folding mechanism as already mentioned. Uh, then we're gonna talk about the overall performance. We're gonna speak about battery, battery life and the range. I wanna discuss some things about the firmware and at the end, all the mods that I've done throughout these 12 months. So uh, obviously the first topic would be the tires. These are not the original tires. I'm on a bit less than 1000 kilometers, which is a proof that I don't ride that much and that often. Last summer was actually pretty rainy, so it, it tremendously reduced the amount of time I've spent with the scooter. But anyhow, for less than 1000 kilometers, I've got four punctures, which made me go home by foot four times and it was rather unpleasant. Replacing the tires is not that hard if you have some experience. So uh, the rear one is not that bad, but if you have to do that on the front one, it really takes a long time. Uh, so eventually I've decided to go for these solid tires and probably this is the best decision I've ever taken uh, about this scooter. I've tried a few different versions and I'm having these for around 100 kilometers already. Is the riding experience smoother with pneumatic tires? It is. Is it a huge difference? No. In fact, this particular moto is almost as soft as the original tires and in hot weather, if you're rather a heavy person, you won't feel much of a difference. You'll notice that they have a different shape and now the scooter is steadily pointing forward by itself. Could be subjective, but I feel more confident when riding. The disadvantage is that their grip is not that great, but if there's something that comes close to the originals, these solid tires are great and don't cost that much. I pay 35 euro for both, which is about $40. Some people claim that the installation is difficult. Let me put it like that. It's uh, a bit easier than replacing the original tires if you have a puncture, especially on the front one. I've placed a solid tire in oven at 85 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes, that's about 185 Fahrenheit, and then the rubber was flexible enough to easily fit. Uh, add some grease or other kind of lubricant. I actually used cooking oil and it worked fine. The smartest trick you should take advantage of is to use cable ties and fix the tire before being able to push and apply pressure or pull at the top. I almost managed to fit the front one without any tools. And if my fingers were a little stronger, I'm sure I was going to succeed. You just get a couple of screwdrivers and you have this done in minutes. Second main issue is the folding mechanism, which on one side is very good and much better than on other scooters, but on the other side, well, uh, many people claim that this particular part can easily break. So um, I'm still using the original, it's done out of aluminum, which offers a great balance between price, strength and weight. So I, I guess that's why uh, Xiaomi have decided to go for this one. Um, I'm also having this vibration damper because probably 100 kilometers after I got the scooter, the whole thing started to feel very loose and it's not at all comfortable when you're riding. So uh, I managed to find these vibration dampers on a website, uh, curiousjoe.se, and I ordered them. That was almost a year ago, probably two weeks after I got the scooter. So this little vibration damper makes miracles. Nowadays you can buy this literally everywhere and there are different sizes like 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and so on. Um, and they guarantee that uh, your mechanism is not going to be loose any longer. Of course, there's a way to regulate. If it's too loose, you know, you can, you can use the screws 
and improve the overall performance. Uh, I actually bought other things from Curious Joe and interestingly he, he tracked me down after I, I got my first video released and offered me to test some other things so by the end of the video I'll come back to some other modifications. Topic number three, performance, and I'll speak about the battery in a separate one. So the performance when this one was released was outstanding. And I'm saying that because it comes back to 2017 when this scooter was way better than most of the competition. Right now in 2019, there already are a number of solutions which are faster, they accelerate faster, they have higher speeds and so on. They, they, they have much more powerful motors. Uh, so, well, first thing, the performance has not degraded over time which is a good thing but um, right now if you consider buying the m365 the original one uh, you should know that for a person like me which weighs about 90 kilos it feels okay if a person weighs 70 kilos it's probably going to be great because the acceleration would be uh, much better uh, right now there's the m365 pro which has a more powerful motor over here we have 250 watts actually it's on the front <laughs> so it's 250 watts and in peak moments it can go as high as 500. The Pro has 300 and respectively 600 in peak power, which is, which is quite nice. Uh, I've already tested this year two motos which are a bit quicker. You know, one of them is the Kugo S1, which is first of all definitely faster and its motor is more powerful. And I've already tested Narsin, which is uh, something, something I'm gonna show you in a separate video. It's definitely uh, a moto which is worth checking but it's very different to the concept of the M365. The official top speed of this scooter is about 25 km per hour with the sport mode. The eco mode goes as much as 18. Uh, there are some mods which are possible that can potentially increase the speeds but keep in mind that in many countries there are limitations like for most of Europe you can't go beyond 25 kilometers, which is about 18 miles per hour. Um, some countries uh, keep the speed limit even down at 20. So uh, given the circumstances and given these limitations, I believe this motor is still just about right. There is one thing we can always say about a battery, and it's the fact we can always ask for greater autonomy. You know, um, the battery here lasts for up to 30 kilometers which equals to 22 miles uh, it's it's a very good range considering the fact that the new pro version can last up to 45 i'm really curious to find out how much that is in reality i told you about my weight uh, i'm about 90 kilos 188 centimeters and with the echo mode um, i can ride as long as 25 kilometers if I'm careful and if I help the scooter from time to time. With the sports mode this value is lower so it can vary. Could be around uh, 13 to 15 kilometers in the worst case scenario and these are situations where I constantly stop and go which is of course the <laughs> worst scenario about the battery. And for the rides where I'm more gently accelerating I can go up to 22 kilometers doesn't happen too often so I guess my sweet spot is about 20 kilometers with um, sports mode and 23 to 24 with the echo. The good thing about the M365 is that you can very easily find a lot of spare parts and that includes batteries. You've got to be careful though there are plenty of batteries which claim to have greater capacity than the originals and some of them are not even lithium-ion batteries you know I've seen a lot of advertisements in AliExpress for uh, larger batteries, uh, most of them wouldn't really last half of what the originals would. So if you're about to replace them, make sure you get original batteries or get someone to make you from, from proper lithium-ion cells. Um, the other thing I'm, I'm quite curious about is whether the Pro model battery is, is going to fit in here. But I guess we are about to find that soon enough. Next is the firmware. Did you know that you can actually change most of the parameters? Like you can remove the uh, top speed limitation, you can change the maximum speed in echo and normal mode. 
uh, you could change the motor start speed, you can change the curse behavior, literally everything. In fact, there's a website which lets you compile your own flavor of custom ROM. So let me take you to this page. This is the website. It allows you to experiment with these values a lot. Of course, such modifications will void your warranty and some of them may lead to unexpected behavior or issues or even damages. So try to not be too extreme as nobody wants any kind of failures. I've always been using the stock because I know myself, if I start flashing custom firmwares, I'll do that very often and I'll never settle. And because of that, I've decided to keep the stock value. Some recent posts in the communities indicate that it gets much harder to flash custom ROMs if you're on firmwares above 150, but there are still some ways to downgrade. After the firmware, let me talk about some of the hardware modes. Uh, I told you that I've already bought the vibration damper, which is nicely helping me for quite some time from a website, curiousjoe.se, and I recently had the chance to test more of these nice accessories. The one I like the most is that. You know, um, it's the battery cover. And I, I can promise to you, it makes not just a difference, it makes a huge difference. I'm based in Bulgaria and the roads here are very often dirty, sometimes uh, dusty, sometimes a little muddy. So um, if I ride while it's raining, when I go back home, everything at the bottom is, is a total mess. And even if you try to wash it, it's almost impossible because of the texture of the original battery cover. So this one is fantastic. My greatest concern was the replacement process because I was thinking it's gonna take me A, too much time and B, could be requiring some special skills. Well, guess what? It was much easier than actually mounting uh, this accessory over here. It was pretty much the same. All you need is a screwdriver. There are about 20 screws you need to get rid of. Remove the original battery cover, put this one. It's actually um, fitting perfectly fine and cleaning. Uh, I, I can show you with my finger. It just, it just takes seconds, you know. Take a sponge and it's totally clean in seconds. Other than that, I also have the display cover with carbon fiber texture a shoe for the scooter stand and I also have a fender but didn't mount it so far and also these beautiful reflective stickers which makes drivers notice my vehicle easier at night. The things I've learned throughout this year, I know my range is somewhere between 15 and 25 kilometers. I know that I'll never ever have a puncture again and that makes me super happy. Uh, thirdly, I'm riding with a bit of concern about this folding mechanism, whether it's gonna fail me or not, because yeah, it could hurt a bit. Therefore, always wear a helmet. And fourthly, it's a lot of fun. I think that's the nicest way of commuting to work, um, no matter where you are. And certainly a very good way to go at work without being too sweaty, you know, that compared to riding a bicycle. Um, overall, I truly enjoy having my M365. Whether I'm going to upgrade to the Pro version, most likely yes, most likely that's going to be the case. And of course, if that happens, I'll make sure to let you know what the difference is. Well, thank you a lot for staying here for the past few minutes. I truly hope uh, sharing my experience is worth something to you. If that's the case, yeah, give me a thumb up or maybe better, subscribe, because I'd love to see you again here back at the Tech for All channel. My name is Michael and nothing else left than wishing you a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. Bye.